Northeast set scheduled on 19th March 2023. How are you doing today? Well, this is Hina from Team Tess. And as I was analyzing the paper of SLET exam for Northeast, I've realized that there are too many questions based on true and false, match the following, assertion reason. Now see, the questions are easy, but since you have so much to see, ki konsa option true hai, konsa false hai, they'll give you four statements and we have to see which option is true, which is false. So that is very brain racking, right? So that's personally what I felt in Northeast set. Since I am covering all the set exams across India, this is something I felt in Northeast. Too many statements to cover for reason assertion, for match the following, etc. But then believe me, we don't have to give up, okay? The strategy is work every day, work consistently, slowly, work smart, and you will be there, okay? And we at TESS are always there to help you. So... Here again with past year question answers, 15 questions with explanations, and you will remember them when you're sitting and taking your exam, okay? You're writing your exam. Let's begin. And how has your Sunday been going till now? Good? It'll be super good with these question answers. Let's begin with question number one. Name the author of the novel, novel The Female Quick Soat, or The Adventures of Arabella. Option A, Sarah Scott. B, Mary Wardley Montagu. C, Sarah Fielding. Or D, Charlotte Lennox. The female quick sort or the adventures of Arabella is by option D, Charlotte Lennox. Now, you know Charlotte Lennox. She was a Scottish novelist who lived from 1729 to 1804. But you remember the Dawn Quixote, which was an epic Spanish novel written by Miguel de Cervantes. Well, isi ka parody bole, ya phir satire bole, that is this work, The Female Quick Sword, okay? So if a question comes in exam which says that which of these novels is a satirical harlequinade, okay? Or a burlesque or a depiction of the power of female. So tick mark The Female Quick Sword. Easy? Question number two. In which play by William Shakespeare does the protagonist give instructions on the art of acting? A, as you like it. B, Macbeth. C, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Or D, Hamlet. Tell me. The protagonist is instructing the actors or the players in option D, Hamlet. Do you remember, remember act three, scene two? Hamlet is advising the players. There are a few advices I really want to tell you. He says that, First, say your lines as I taught them to you in a lively manner. Second, do not over gesture with your hands too much. Joki kabi kabi mai karti hu. <laughs> Third, do not become overly passionate or wain so loudly that the audience have to, you know, finger their ears with pain, you know, in pain. And fourth advice that Hamlet gives to the players is, don't be too under-energized either, okay? Ek dam niche nahi, ek dam upar nahi. And that is what Hamlet says to the players. See, I'll tell you, Shakespeare himself was an actor. So maybe through Hamlet, Shakespeare is conveying his feelings about the art of acting, right? Let's move on to question number three. The statements given below are true or false. You have to tell me that. Now let's read them correctly. A. Emily Dickinson's poems display a kind of sublime platonic love between man and woman. Is it true? Yes, it is. See, if you remember Emily's poems like The Chariot or Because I Could Not Stop for Death, they talk of this immortal or platonic love. So option A is true. B, in Leaves of Grass, Whitman holds and objectively analyzes satirical picture of America. Does Whitman actually satirize America or praises America? He praises. So this option is false. See a little bit about Leaves of Grass. This is a collection of poetry written by Walt Whitman, which he wrote throughout his life. And in this collection of poems, he kept on adding poems. Agar kuch poems ki baat karo in Leaves of Grass, for example, drum taps and memories of President Lincoln. In these poems, you know, Whitman is talking like a nationalist. He praises America, okay? So B is false. C, 
William Cullen Bryant's poems are mainly on nature. W.C. Bryant, you remember, was an American romantic poet. So yes, his poems mainly focus on nature. So C option is true. Now D, Robert Graves' poems are centered around natural beauty and its magic effect. No, no, no. Robert Graves was a war poet. He spoke about the harsh realities of war. He was a confessional poet. So D is false. So what happened? A true, B false, C true, D false. Let's look at what choices they have given us. It's option A. So the answer is option A, right? Abhi, C, to help you learn better, here are the photos of all these poets. Look at Emily Dickinson, American poet from 1830 to 1886. Walt Whitman, American poet, 1890 to 1892. William Cullen Bryant, American poet who lived from 1794 to 1878. While Robert Graves, English poet who lived from 1895 to 1985. Okay, hogya. Let's move on to question number four. Match the following characters with their novels. Characters diye ve hai, novels diye ve hai. Bataye, who belongs to which novel? Shall we directly come to the answer? That will be easy and nice. Here is the answer. Option D. So Lady Belliston is the character in Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. Jeannie Deans, she's a fictional character in The Heart of Midlothian by Walter Scott. Inspector Bucket is a detective who actually solves the mystery of the novel Bleak House, right? Bleak House is a novel by Charles Dickens. So Inspector Bucket belongs to Bleak House. And last is Robert Lovelace, who is an aristocratic libertine in Clarissa by Samuel Richardson. Ho gaya? Easy? Chalye. Let's move on to question number five, assertion and reason. What is the assertion? The founding of America was seen by the Puritan settlers as a reenactment of the biblical myth of the promised land. Is it true? It is true, yes. It was seen by the Puritans as the biblical myth reenactment of the promised land. Reason kya hai? Puritan literature was dominantly religious and didactic. didactic. Is it true? Yes, it is. So, matlab, option A, both assertion and reason are true. That is the answer. Let's move on to question number six. A Spansarian stanza has how many iambic pentameters? A4, B6, C8, or D10? Tell me, easy. It is option C8. Now, Edmund Spencer of 16th century invented the Spencerian stanza for his masterpiece work called as the Fairy Queen. 16th century, century se lekar abhi tak hamare paas ye stanza hai. Now, what is a Spanserian stanza? It consists of nine lines out of which eight lines are in iambic pentameter. And there is a last single alexandrine in iambic hexameter. Abhi easiest example I've given you, you should read it. This is The Lotus Eaters by Alfred Lord Tennyson, the poem. And this entire is a Spanserian stanza. Courage, he said, it pointed towards land. This mounting wave will roll us showward soon. You read it, okay? It'll be good for you. So this is a typical Spanserian stanza example invented by Edmund Spencer, okay? Question number seven. Derrida's American disciples were, tell me, American disciples of Jack Derrida were A, Geoffrey Hartman, Paul D. Mann, J. Hillis Miller. B, Gertrude Steen, Barbara Johnson, Michael Ryan. C, Barbara Johnson, Michael Ryan, Mary Elman. Or D, Jean Baudrillard, Giles Deleuze, or Felix Guattari. What is the answer? It is option A, Geoffrey Hartman, Paul DeMann, and J. Hillis Miller. You know, all of them, along with Derrida, actually were part of the Yale School. And they all advocated deconstruction as a means of analyzing text. And here is Jack Derrida on the screen, right? Let's move on to question number eight. Identify the correctly matched sets. Look, here you have four works given and they have given publication dates. The works are The Shepherd's Calendar, Tuttle's Miscellany, Astrophel and Stella, and The Spanish Tragedy. You have to tell me which is the correct publication dates of them. Can you see? I'll tell you the answer. It is option A, 
The Shepherd's Calendar published in 1579, Total's Miscellany published in 1557, Astrophil and Stella published in 1591, while the Spanish Tragedy published around 1585. Abhi ye sab dates to you have to remember, like how you remember aaj pura din kya karna hai, kya padna hai. To ye dates to important works ki you have to remember. I mean, you can't escape from dates or chronologies. Okay, let's move on to question number nine. Where ignorance is bliss, it is folly to be wise. Who wrote the following lines? A. Pope, B. Gray, C. Collins or D. Sade. It is option B, Thomas Gray, the 18th century poet. He wrote these lines in his poem, Ode on a Distant Prospect of Eton College, if of 1742. Abhi short form may, this quote is used a lot, this phrase, where we say ignorance is bliss, ignorance is bliss. But in reality, what Th Thomas Gray meant is that we should not obstruct our mind unnecessarily about what lies ahead. That is actually what Thomas Gray meant by these lines. But these days we say ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss. Okay. Chalye. Easy. Okay. Let's move on to question number 10. Who is the author of Mary and the unfinished poem, The Wrongs of Woman? Option A, Mary Wollstonecraft. B, William Godwin. C, Mary Hay. Or D, Elizabeth Inchbold. Mary and the Wrongs of Women are works by A. Mary Wollstonecraft. Okay. Now, Mary Wollstonecraft was an English feminist writer who lived from 1759 to 1797. Okay. Now, do you remember Mary's subse famous work here? Her political treatise called as a Vindication of the Rights of Women. Isi work ka jo sequel hai, that is Maria or the Wrongs of Women although it was unfinished. But if a question comes, which is the only finished novel by Mary Wollstonecraft, uska answer you will write Mary a fiction. Remember, the only complete novel by Mary Wollstonecraft is Mary a fiction. Okay? And Maria or the Wrong of Women is the sequel of A Vindication of the Rights of Women. Easy? Let's move on. Question number 11. Which among the following novels what was not written in 1922? A. Ulysses, B. Jacob's Room, C. Aaron Rod, or D. A Passage to India. Ulysses, Jacob's Room, Aaron's Road, Tino published in 1922, but A Passage to India was published in 1924. Okay? Okay? Chali, question number 12. A rose sanctuary will I dress? With the wreathed trellis of a working brain. These lines are quoted from A. Adonai, B. Ode to Psyche, C. Eve of St. Agnes, or D. Endymion. Tell me, a rose sanctuary will I dress with the reed trellis of a working brain is from option B. Ode to Psyche by John Keats. Written in 1890. Forms a part of the trilogy of odes written by Keats in 1890. Matlab, Teen odes likhi John Keats ne ek saath, jis mein pehli hai Ode to Psyche, dousri hai Ode to On a Creation Urn, Ode on a Creation Urn, and tisri hai Ode to a Nightingale. Ode to Psyche ki baat kare, to is mein, you know, the narrator is saying that he wants to build a temple for the goddess Psyche. Goddess Psyche is the goddess of soul and mind. So the narrator wants to build a temple for Psyche out of his imagination and not by stones. Okay, this is the love story of Psyche and Cupid. These questions can come. Okay, Psyche Cupid's love story is Ode to Psyche. The narrator wants to build a temple in Ode to Psyche, like that. Question number 12. Sorry, 13. Which of the following is not a Canadian writer? A. Shana Singh Baldwin. B. Himani Banerjee. C. Joy Kogawa. Or D. Mina Alexander. Do you know it? See, easiest is we know Mina Alexander is not a Canadian writer. She's an Indian American writer. So she's the odd one out. The answer has to be Mina Alexander. Shauna, Himani, Joy, they all belong to Canada. Okay. Look at Mina Alexander on the screen. And can you tell me a few important works of Mina? A. Fault Lines, a memoir. B. Illiterate Hearts. Okay. Let's move on to question number 14. Among the following playwrights, who was awarded the Pulitzer Prize in 1920? 
A. Eugene O'Neill, B. Sean O'Casey, C. William Somerset Mom, or D. J. B. Priestley. But now it was actually Pulitzer Prize for Drama. So it was awarded for a play to Eugene O'Neill for Beyond the Horizon. Okay, Eugene O'Neill, look at him on the screen, an American playwright who lived from 1888 to 1953. His play won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. And if there is a question, aata hai, which play setting is the Mayo Farm? Or which play has characters from the Mayo family, like Robert Mayo, Andrew Mayo, James Mayo, Kate Mayo? So, what answer you Beyond the Horizon. Okay? 1920, we mila Pulitzer Prize. Question number 15, Yasmin Gunaratne's The Pleasures of Conquest, termed as a post-colonial novel of the 90s, is ironically set in the tropical island nation of A. Sri Lanka, B. Fiji, C. The Caribbean, or D. Amnesia. Yasmin Gunaratne is actually a Sri Lankan poet who is born in 1935. She lives in Sri Lanka as of now. And her novel, The Pleasures of Conquest, is set in a fictitious country of option D, amnesia. A little bit about The Pleasures of Conquest. See, in this post-colonial novel, Yasmin weaves four different stories. But all these stories are connected to each other. How? First, they revolve around the super luxurious new imperial hotel. Second, Characters in one story pop up in another story. And third, all these stories are located in Amnesia, which many critics say resembles Ceylon or Sri Lanka. Okay, ho gaya, ho gaya aaj ka Northeast Set Practice Test. Let me tell you, if you want to avail our courses, our paid courses by test, in which you will get more detailed analysis, more detailed videos to help you with set and net across India, you can contact us on the number 938783971. This is Hina from Team Test. Enjoy your Sunday. Abhi jitna bacha hai. And if you studied a lot, abhi thoda bahar ja ke chill and just breathe the natural air. Okay, go to a garden. That is the best place to hang out for students, I feel. <laughs> and cafes also. Yes, yes. Chai cafes, tea cafes. How can we forget that? Okay, take care. Bye.